Welcome back to our channel. Before we get started on the topic of today's discussion, we'd like to recognize and thank our spiritual father, Apostle Joshua Salman, for his guidance and leadership. We consider ourselves extremely fortunate to be a part of this ministry and to have the opportunity to learn from a compassionate and astute leader. Today, we want to delve into an important topic, why it's so important to forgive yourself. Forgiveness is a powerful act that has the ability to bring healing and freedom to our lives, and this is especially true when it comes to forgiving ourselves. It can be difficult to let go of the mistakes we've made and the regrets we may have, but forgiveness is a crucial step in the journey towards self-acceptance and personal growth. In this video, we will go over the various reasons why you should forgive yourself, as well as how doing so can lead to increased levels of happiness, peace, and fulfillment in your life. As a result, we invite you to join us in exploring this critical topic and learning more about the transformative power of forgiving others. We will be joining our Father in the Lord Apostle Joshua Salman later in the video, so stay tuned for that. As I previously stated, the act of forgiving others is a powerful one that has the potential to bring about healing and freedom in our lives. When we allow ourselves to harbor resentments, grudges, and feelings of guilt, we place undue strain on ourselves and allow ourselves to be enslaved by the past. This can make it difficult for you to move forward in your life and prevent you from living fully. One of the most important reasons you must forgive yourself is so that you can move on from the events of the past. When we harbor feelings of guilt and shame, it's as if we're stuck in a rut, unable to move forward or backwards. On the other hand, if we can forgive ourselves, we can let go of that burden and start over. The healing power of forgiveness can benefit both a person's emotional and physical well-being. When we harbor resentment and hold grudges, it can be detrimental to both our mental and physical health. Not only can the ability to forgive others help reduce stress, anxiety, and depression, but it can also improve our overall physical health. Forgiving yourself is important for a variety of reasons, one of which is that it allows you to practice self-compassion. It is very easy for us to be extremely critical of ourselves and hold ourselves to impossible standards. However, when we practice self-compassion, we can be calmer, more understanding, and merciful to ourselves. This has the potential to increase our feelings of worthiness and value, as well as our self-esteem and self-confidence. Furthermore, you must forgive yourself in order to experience the transformative power of God's mercy and grace. According to the Bible, God is compassionate and kind, and when we ask for forgiveness, He is quick to forgive us. It is written in the book of Colossians chapter 13 verse 3. It says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. We can experience the fullness of God's love and grace in our own lives when we can forgive ourselves. When we can forgive others, we can help others forgive themselves. Remember that forgiveness is about releasing ourselves from the weight of the past and being kind to ourselves, not about whether or not we deserve it. Lean on other people's love and support, and believe in the power of God's forgiveness to bring healing and freedom into your life. In Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 to 15, Jesus says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This passage reminds us of the importance of forgiveness, both for ourselves and for others. When we refuse to forgive ourselves, we are effectively saying that we do not believe in the power of God's forgiveness. But when we extend forgiveness to ourselves, we are able to experience the fullness of God's love and grace in our own lives. 
It's important to note that forgiving ourselves does not mean that we are excusing our actions or minimizing their consequences. We may still need to face the consequences of our actions and make amends when necessary. But when we forgive ourselves, we are able to let go of the guilt and shame that can hold us back and move forward in a positive direction. Forgiving ourselves can also involve seeking help and support from others. It's okay to ask for help when we are struggling to forgive ourselves. Whether it's through therapy, support groups, or conversations with trusted friends and family members, seeking help can be a valuable step in the forgiveness process. One way to start the process of forgiving ourselves is by acknowledging and accepting our mistakes. This can be difficult, but it's an important step in the process. It's okay to admit that we have made mistakes and to take responsibility for our actions. When we do this, we can begin to let go of the guilt and shame that often accompany our mistakes. Another way to forgive ourselves is to practice self-compassion. As I mentioned earlier, self-compassion requires the expression of kindness, understanding, and mercy toward oneself. This can be accomplished by having a compassionate and understanding conversation with ourselves, reminding ourselves that we are human, and we all make mistakes. We hope that you have found this message to be helpful and thought-provoking. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it with others and give it a thumbs up. Now, let's turn to the teachings of our spiritual father, Apostle Joshua Salman. Thanks for watching. Please lift your hands to heaven and let's ask the Lord to speak to us. Speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please let's be seated for the sake of time. I was really touched to know that this is a kingdom pro um, a, a kingdom conference. As you may have known, I I was greatly mentored by Dr. Miles Munro of Blessed Memory and he was one of the vessels that God used to inculcate to help me truly understand the kingdom. Um, Jesus said many things about the kingdom and the efficiency of the saints among other things it depends on their thorough comprehension on the kingdom and how it operates praise the name of the lord now according to scripture there are seven dimensions to the gospel there's no time i will just touch on two of them the gospel that we preach has seven dimensions to it the first the bible refers to as the gospel of salvation and and i'm glad that this is a ministry and a commission that is is very intentional about the lost very intentional about soul winning the gospel of salvation now when you when you make reference to the gospel of salvation in the gospel of salvation watch this now the originator of the entire discourse is the father himself are we together extending his love to creation and then man more specifically jesus now being the mediator so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father to man and by extension creation in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus are we together to the intent that if we believe that gospel we receive number one his life 
and then in addition to his life we are able to be partakers of all the things that we lost from the garden of eden this is the gospel of salvation so when we talk about the gospel of salvation it has to do with god revealing his love through his son who became savior the object of that love being man and then creation are we still together and that under the gospel of salvation man really does not do anything man is the one who fell short of the standard and he's depending on a god who can help him it was an entire work that was done by jesus the only thing man does the only participatory role that man has to do or to play is to believe who have believed our report are we together yes so again the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father to man and then creation revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus to the end according to john 3 16 that whosoever believes in him the bible declares shall not perish here's how it says it for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only now we know he's not the one and only he's only the first begotten of we the brethren but as at then he was the one and only begotten son are we together that whosoever believes that person should not perish but have it's not exactly everlasting life by now you know it is the life of god because in truth everybody has everlasting life everlasting life means life without end nobody really ceases to live there is only a change in dimension are we together now when you evangelize you don't ask people will they spend eternity the issue is location where not the possibility the parable of the rich man and lazarus when they finished on earth sin two all of them were still alive and they were very conscious so what jesus came to give was not just eternal life it's a quality of life god's kind of life are we together now yes it was a limitation in translation because the bible largely the old testament was written in hebrew and then the new testament was a combination of greek and aramaic are we together now with a bit of latin scattered around so the 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 way they would translate scripture is to find the best expression the best contextual expression of the word and so there were limitations here and there this is the gospel of salvation now the assignment of the gospel of salvation is that on hearing the message it should help man comprehend the depth of the love of the father are we together scripture declares behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us in that through jesus now he has made us to be called sons of god are we together so now we are sons of god the end of the gospel of salvation is that we be saved from what eternal damnation that came through sin not just the sins we committed alone primarily the sin of man are we together adam now are we together now but if this is the only dimension of the gospel that we know we will be saved but never become efficient that is not the only angle to the gospel in fact respectfully speaking it was this incomplete communication of the full counsel of god that has deprived africa or as a continent of rising to its height in destiny and in prophecy because if the entire scope of our understanding of the assignment of jesus and the entire span of everything god is just the substitutionary sacrifice of christ now we are saved what next this has been the age-long confusion so people have received that gospel they have believed that gospel many years ago i did a series on the full gospel where it was an attempt to examine the seven major gospels around the nigerian church how they came the imbalances just to bring context and balance to it 
the gospel of salvation is powerful but that is not the only dimension of the gospel because you notice that in the gospel of salvation there is no responsibility given to man and right from genesis 1 let them have dominion it's not just a language of authority it's a language of responsibility because there is no true authority without responsibility authority and responsibility go hand in hand are we together so that leads me to the last dimension of the gospel called the gospel of the kingdom now the gospel of the kingdom is another dimension of the gospel but in the gospel of the kingdom jesus is no longer savior dying on the cross jesus is king enthroned and exalted man is no longer a sinner just in need of salvation are we together now man is the citizen of a kingdom mandated with an authority it is not just the revelation of the father's love to man it is man's gratitude back to god are we are we together now so the gospel of the kingdom represents that dimension of the gospel where man now becomes effective becomes efficient he can now answer to certain names you see believers are named in two ways in scripture one is based on identification there are names given to believers theologically speaking based on identification an example we are joined heirs that is a language of identification are we together now yes but there is there are names that are given to believers based on function an example light jesus had teaching at the beatitudes he says you are the light you are salt you are ambassadors you are kings and priests revelation 5 and verse 10 we have been made unto our god these are not just languages of identification they are languages that connote authority with responsibility so knowing who we are in christ understanding our oneness according to ephesians 1 2 3 that is wonderful as far as inculcating in us the understanding of the love of jesus and then the reality of our salvation the salvation of our souls but it does not stop there the gospel of the kingdom now begins to introduce us to the responsibility dimension of living the inability to understand the gospel of the kingdom will eventually produce people who might be genuinely saved but they will never be able to rise to the position of kingdom influence where they legislate remember to show your support by clicking Christ, the like button where they establish this simple action is a great way to show your appreciation together? and encourage us to keep Jesus, uploading more great content the gospel of the it can also help to and increase the visibility the of the message and make it more accessible to others kingdom, who may also find it helpful very interesting so if you are feeling blessed show said. your support by liking Repent. the video god bless you <sighs> for the kingdom is at hand what is the meaning of such a statement as soon as he talks about the gospel of the kingdom the first mandate is that you are inefficient until you repent repentance is not just a word for sinners repentance is a system of realignment that means use me as a reference and begin to adjust yourself until you find out that you are in line with me repent is not a language for just sinners like someone repenting of sins repent means to begin to transit until you become a perfect reflection in experience of the character of the christ repentance is the process that makes you like christ in experience he says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you so a conference like this you will be surprised that what is happening right now in god's mind is called repentance the system of transformation by introducing kingdom truths you see that so he now begins to show that there is a relationship between the mind and the belief system of the people and they are being efficient as far as legislating on behalf of the kingdom is concerned this is very powerful the gospel of salvation jesus does everything 
man receives by faith it becomes a reality the gospel of the kingdom god has a need the need is to see his glory fill the earth to see jesus revealed to see jesus glorified and the object the only entity that sustains the ability to satisfy that need is man and so as powerful as god is he invests such trust in man and he said man i'm trusting you and i'm counting on you that in and through you my glory will fill the earth in and through you creation all and sundry will know that there is a god that reigns supreme and above all and for you to be efficient in understanding this assignment you will need to re repentance is a very powerful process it is the process of transition that now helps us to inculcate the belief systems of the kingdom philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 for the sake of time i'll just quote quickly the bible says let this mind be in you the word let there means permit this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus so there was a belief system jesus did not just come and represent the purposes of the father because he was the son of god remember he came as a man empty a young boy empty a baby and he began the process of transformation at age 12 when his colleagues were loitering up and down he was there with the scribes and the pharisees learning are we together theologically speaking for the next 18 years we do not hear about jesus again the next time he shows up is a 30 year old gentleman coming to be baptized of john the prophet who we call the baptist john looks at jesus and says behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and john tells jesus i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes then jesus said suffer it to be so that scripture be fulfilled when he dipped him in water and he came out the bible declares that the heavens open is that true and the holy ghost descended upon him in bodily form in the similitude of a dove and then a voice spoke from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him and from that time he was not just mary's son again he became the christ the anointed of god and he went about establishing the purposes of of the father he gathered a group of people he called 12 disciples alongside many who were interested in that crusade up the mountain and immediately without hesitation his first port of call was not just miracle signs and wonders a few here to publicize him but he now says sit down we have a, an assignment to do for the next three years his interest was their mind notice how he made apostles he didn't just make apostles by impartation impartation happened in one day but in three years the assignment was repentance the real value of the anointing the real your your level of transformation gives credence to the power of god that is resident upon you the anointing is grossly limited in your life if you are not transformed to have the mind of christ we're dealing with the gospel of the kingdom now the major problem with believers the major problem with god's people is not so much the devil it's not so much witchcraft it's not so much sorcery it's not so much of these things it is the inability to laboriously go through the process of repentance that will make us sustain superior belief that will reveal the full potential of the life of god in us ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart psalm 82 verse 5 it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth the bible says they are out of course the next verse says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes if you are feeling blessed 
I will see you together. Consider liking the video. Yes. God bless you. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Paul was mentoring the church. And he says, And now brethren, I commend you to God. And then to the word of his grace. I commend you to God. To the word of his grace. Which is able to build you up. Are we together? And then deliver unto you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Everybody say repentance. The gospel of the kingdom empowers believers to be light, empowers believers to be salt, empowers believers to be agents of national transformation. Can I be sincere with you? And I say it with every sense of honor to the man of God and his wife. Even ministerially speaking, if you do not mentor and mature believers to understand that there are dimensions to the gospel they will be sound as far as their loving god is concerned but they will be irresponsible citizens of a territory are we together now they will never be able to take responsibility and then grow to the point where they contend for influence and all of these factors that help believers work practically in dominion i hope that we'll look at this tomorrow we're discussing kingdom matters now the first assignment of a believer who wants to now begin to manifest the kingdom is repentance. Not signs and wonders. Not power. Not miracles. Repentance. The system of submitting yourself to a body of spiritual truth that the Bible calls marvelous light. To the intent that you become like Christ in experience, you understand his ways and now you are ready to represent him. One, one king to be came over to my place and um, he came to fellowship with us a few weeks ago and he told me he was he's going to become the next king now. The king in that region died and he was the one they were preparing to be and so he came to see me just for prayer and he told me for the next 90 days from that time nobody will see his face again i said why he said he would have to go through a process of training and that system of quarantine would require that he does not interact with people in the exterior because he will be learning the core ethics of his kingdom the destiny of that kingdom until it dies will be dependent on his level of transformation so he had to go through that level of rigor i said this is it that is kingdom repentance every idea he's had does not matter at that point there will be a group of lecturers kingmakers who will sit him down and begin to transfer the passion of that kingdom in him at the end of that lecture that king will be willing to live and die for his kingdom are we together the reason why it is difficult to represent the purposes of God and listen you do not become empowered empowerment for service does not come just at the instance of the gospel of salvation the empowerment you get when you give your life to Jesus is for your own build-up the empowerment for service comes when you understand the gospel of the kingdom why do you need anointing why do you need prosperity why do you need influence why do you need wealth all of these things are useless until they come as tools of empowering you to manifest as a king and a priest are we together yes so the gospel of prosperity in isolation to kingdom does not profit signs and wonders and miracles and impartation in isolation outside of his connection to kingdom does not profit all these other aspects of the faith life they find their relevance to the degree to which they are connected to kingdom come on the strength of kingdom come your pastor will teach you so lavishly about all the financial systems he will help you understand the economic system of god now you are not just a money monger wanting to prosper there is an understanding that sponsors your passion for wealth because it is now a tool for kingdom come if god grants you speed if god grants you breakthrough now you can want to become that politician that governor you are not just looking for a way of feeling relevant there is an assignment that is bigger than you the theme is called thy kingdom come are we blessed now yes 
to blindly just want to prosper for the sake of prosperity will eventually frustrate you to blindly just want cars no the reference for your desire the reference for your pursuit the reference for your hunger when you understand the gospel of the kingdom you will be able to defend your prayer request why are you asking God to make you a billionaire and you can stand tall without any sense of shame and say because the king's business require haste and Zechariah 1 verse, verse um, 20 I believe 18 now 17 cry yet saying thus saith the Lord my seat is true prosperity shall be filled and I will yet comfort Zion so you don't feel apologetic about trusting God for the blessings of God no matter what ignorant people say you are confident you can approach God when you are studying those books on finances you are not feeling guilty because kingdom come is the motivation when you go to fast and you are trusting God to bring you the healing anointing you are not embarrassed about it because you know that the purpose is not just to heal people the healing is only a means to an end it is to the degree or to the intent that Christ be revealed and Christ be glorified listen to me we only become truly fulfilled in our faith work when we understand kingdom come and when that becomes the drive my entire life revolves around kingdom if i cannot find kingdom represented in my desire i have no business being there this should be the justification for your wanting to eat and stay healthy why do you want to stay healthy i'm afraid of death that's a wrong motivation because in life and in death we are victorious it's a wrong motivation so the reason why you want to live long is not because you are afraid of death it's not because you have piled up treasures for yourself on earth here and you are afraid no it's because this body is your path for your spirit to remain there and there is a lot that needs to be done as far as kingdom come is concerned we hope that the message shared by our father in the lord apostle joshua salmon has had a positive impact on your life and brought you blessings. If you found the message to be uplifting or inspiring, we encourage you to share it with others who may also benefit from hearing it. Showing your support with a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel can help to spread the message and make it available to more people. If you have any questions or thoughts on the message, we welcome you to share them in the comments section below. We value your feedback and appreciate your continued viewership. We hope to have the opportunity to share more powerful messages with you in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.